The following podcast may contain adult language and an abundance of 70s bush. So get ready, nerds, because we're talking 1976's Carrie. Welcome, everybody, and thank you for joining us on this episode of the Salty Nerd Podcast. This is part three of our Stephen King week. We're talking Carrie from 1976. I am joined, as always, by my fantastic panel of nerds. Matt Vader is staring at the screen right now. <laughs> I can't take my eyes off. <laughs> he can't take his eyes off the 70s bush. <laughs> it's so it's so wildly, weirdly... <laughs> 70s. Like, 70s to me. It's like, listen, man, I like boobs. I like, I like naked ladies. Um, this... From the very beginning of this movie, I feel like a weird, creepy, dirty old man. Have you ever watched porn from the 70s? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. And, um, but okay. These are high school girls. That is a weird thing. Okay. On, on well, the wait, screen here. I got to introduce everybody else first before we got dive into this. Whoa. What <laughs> Jude, is happening? Oh, hello. Jude picked this movie. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> What's up? Hi. Matt Kiddish, he's also here. Don't make it dirty. Yeah, so we're, we're talking about the opening shot of Carrie, which is the big Brian De Palma slow motion <laughs> tracking shot through the girls' locker room, where basically uh, it's every guy's fantasy from, uh, what was it, um, Road Trip? Yeah. About how girls <laughs> act in the locker room, where they're all naked and, and frolicking and having fun. And uh, Jude, of course, when we were watching this, she, she, she turned to me and she was like, it's not like that. <laughs> <laughs> This is an in inaccurate depiction of what happens in girls' locker rooms. There's so much that's uncomfortable with this This scene. whole opening the scene. Whole opening the whole scene. opening part of this. I mean, let me re just rephrase that. This whole movie oh, it's very uncomfortable. makes me uncomfortable. Yes. From from, from, from the, the weird, beginning. The, from the weird uh, underage nakedness yeah. to, the, to the religious stuff to, yeah, dude. Yeah, this dude. was a heavy movie. I, I do want to point out that every girl in this um, movie is over 20 years old. That's so. fine. For the filming. That's cool. Yeah. But I mean, they're, they're playing it. high school I mean, girls. that's what makes my brain, like, justify that I'm not being a weird-ass, dirty old man when I'm watching this. But still, it's like they're, they're, they're portraying high school-age girls. And yeah, it's, it's just, weird. It's very strange. It's very but then weird. I go, well, I watched Porky's and I didn't have a problem with that. You, know? you goddamn <laughs> You were younger thing. when you Same watched thing. that. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't in your 50s, dude. <laughs> Movies. But, um, oh man! Yeah, I get older, they stay the same. same. Oh, it's <laughs> true. Huh? It's like I'm st sticking my dick in the hole in the, in the, in the shower, in the glory hole. <laughs> so, oh, that doesn't mean oh, the same thing anymore. No, it's fucking Porky's, man. We gotta watch that movie someday. Oh shit! Mm -hmm. All right, let's get into this. So we're gonna dive into 1976's Carrie. This is the first watch for me, so I'm looking forward to chatting with it. And I know Jude, this is one of Jude's favorite movies ever. So it's gonna be a blast. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, before we get into the movie, I wanted to mention that you guys can follow us over there at saltynerd.com slash DC and download Dragon, Dragon Champions. It's a really fun mobile game where you get to collect your heroes, upgrade them, and work with us as a team. Join our guild, uh, Salty Nerd Podcast Guild, and uh, you can go on raids with us and stuff like that. If you join up, you can type in Salty in the promo code area. The developers of the game have been kind enough to give us our own little personal promo, and it gives you guys a leg up and gives you new characters and more money and a couple extra things. So uh, join up, Salty Nerd Discord. I'm sorry, Salty nerd.com slash DC download dragon champions and come play with us. Not that way. That's All right. <laughs> come play with us. <laughs> come play you, with me. You freaks. All right. So let's get into Carrie. Speaking of freaks. God damn it. This movie. You're All right. Jude. Me? <laughs> Speaking of freaks, Jude is here. <laughs> Hello. Hello. All right. Is it this bad? Like were chicks this terrible to each other? I feel so bad. This movie's a tragedy, Jude. Tell 1976. <laughs> 1976 Carrie, rated R with a runtime of one hour, 38 minutes. This had a budget of $1.8 million. What do you think this brought into the box office? 1.8 million? 1. That 8 sounds million. about right. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think it made- It's just a bunch of girls. I mean- You don't have to pay them. No, I'm just saying like, there's nothing in this that would make me think it was an expensive movie to make. Yeah. Um, just a bunch of pig's blood. Yeah. I think it made eight million dollars. Okay, Vader. I, I have no idea. Um, Take a guess. This movie seventy six. This, well, this listen, man. This movie is like iconic. Iconic. Yeah, it, it really is. This is probably mm -hmm. if if you had to pick like a top three Stephen King movies uh -huh. or even horror movies. 
Is this, it a this, horror movie? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. For sure. Is this is going to be top 10 horror movies, probably top two or three Stephen King movies of all time. Um, it's, it's, it's iconic. It's called, it's, uh, it's many things, but I'm, I'm always wrong when I pick how much money these things made in the box gut. office. What was the budget? 1.8. And you said what? Seven. I'm going to say probably five or six at, at its initial run. This made, this had a budget of $1.8 million. This made $33 wow. million. That was, that's, 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 that's in 1976. Like, that's like wow. a this was a big million dollars fucking movie deal. probably back then. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. This went countrywide. Everybody saw this movie, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, was John Travolta a star yet? No. This was his first film. Was yeah. It? I think yeah. he had was already this? done Welcome Back Cotter. Well, yeah, was, he, he, was, he was like a TV star. Pre or before he, 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 Back. he was on his lunch break from Welcome Back Carter when he Vinny auditioned Ballerino. for this movie. Welcome and uh, got it. Yeah. And, and, and in fact, at a certain point, uh, they put him at top billing with Sissy Spacek really? on on the poster. What a douche even, even though he yeah. was, he was like a, a very minor character in, in the in the movie. That's a douchebag move. Mm -hmm. She she is this movie. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. God, that great. I don't know what like I don't know how old she was. She was in her twenties, I guess, when she filmed she was this. Twenty six. God damn it, she looks like she's forty something. It's crazy. <laughs> like she does not like it. To me, in my wait, personal wait, wait. opinion, Did she's you, how old was she? Twenty six. When she made this, yeah. Wow. She was actually married to the. Uh, production designer of this movie uh, no idea. and he's the one who got her the audition uh because oh, she's they were, got the look yeah she's were, creepy as fuck they were gonna go with a different <laughs> she girl looks very her. different than she's described in the book really mm -hmm. yeah in, in the book she's like overweight she's got pimples she's like oh, re really like nasty so is her looking. mom in the book too yeah hmm. all right jude yes tell us what the movie's all about all right sir carrie white is a fucking freak and deserves <laughs> to burn in hell she can't hit a volleyball, doesn't know what a period is, and is about to ruin prom for everyone. When John Travolta and Robocop's partner drop a bucket of pig's blood onto the newly crowned prom queen, she like can't take a joke and immediately starts murdering everyone. Once that gets boring, she heads home to relax in the tub, but her mother, who's finally had enough of suffering a witch to live, tries to do the town a favor and take Carrie out herself. Unfortunately for poor, sweet, angelic Mrs. White, she's about to get crucified with telekinetic kitchen cutlery. Discuss. Clever. Cute. Good. <sighs> this movie stressed me out, Jude. Aww, <laughs> like, me too. It was so stressful. I'm so disappointed. Like, this is one of my no, no, favorite I'm, movies I'm, of all time. Yeah. I'm not saying it's a bad movie. That's not no. what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to relay the idea that like, if, you, if a movie is supposed to get an emotional reaction out of you, this movie did it. Absolutely. Sure. I was stressed. Like, I, like you said, you're like apocalyptic. You lost like 10 pounds. <laughs> like I freaking was losing weight. I'm watching so this glad movie. I found you apocalyptic. I your was so scared. <laughs> like I felt so bad for her in that shower scene. Yeah. Like I'm, this, the movie opens up with like just a full on nude shower oh, yeah, scene. Right. We talked weird. about that already. Some 70s bush yeah. everywhere. And I'm this just poor like, poor girl who is 17 at least. She's a senior in high school. Right. Yeah. She's having her first period in the shower. She has no idea what's Isn't happening to her. 17 really old. Really old. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so she's stunted in multiple but ways. But it's also yeah. the 70s, and, and women mature faster now. So it's, they it's not that unheard of, I guess. Too many hormones in the milk. Um, There's something going too on. Too many hormones in the no, milk. No, it's really legit. No, yeah, yeah. yeah they've, already, mean, they've already done the studies. Like, the, the food that we eat yeah. now is so injected yeah, yeah. with different hormones yeah, it's that it's causing good. puberty to happen earlier That's than it why should. don't drink milk, people. Don't, don't drink. Don't yeah, do go organic. Go grass-fed. Yeah. Go find a farmer somewhere if you live in the country. <laughs> get their food from there. Um Factory farming suck. <laughs> Sorry. So the opening scene, like I was legit, like I felt so terrible for this girl. Yeah. And like the girls in this locker room she are she's dying. horrible. They're terrible, her. terrible, yeah. people. terrible people. Yeah. Terrible like, people. Laughing at her. Like I could yeah. understand like being freaked out because this crazy naked chick is running at you with like freaking period blood on yeah. her hands. I understood being freaked out. Like I would be a little freaked out too. But like after the fact, once they realize what's happening and what she's going through, they just start throwing freaking tampons at her yeah. and shit. So you and asked like me a question at, at the beginning yeah, that, that I will now answer. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so you- Oh yeah, our girls this horrible to each other. Um, so have you ever seen Lord of the Flies? Yeah. Okay, so this is kind of the same mentality. Like- it's, Kill the weak. It's, it's the, <laughs> no, but it's the hype of the group. Mm -hmm, and yeah. you don't really realize until after what you did. And this is kind of the same way. And yes, girls are this terrible. Um, I've never been in a locker room that has been this like mob mentality, but I have absolutely witnessed, been the victim of, and probably been the party of like the 
whispers yeah. behind the scene and girls are absolutely this terrible i assume everyone is we're just I, we're awful human beings i don't know if dudes and do and girls that, gang up really. on girls and guys gang up on guys but in a different way what yeah. think i mean guys, i mean so, so there, there was a there was an incident at my high school where a girl got her period during um during gym class and another girl who didn't like this girl stole her bloody panties and tampon and hung Jesus. it hung it on the outside of this girl's locker for the entire school to see oh, and like so like stuff brutal. like this does happen yeah so oh for sure up. so messed up yeah i mean that, and that, that person should have been expelled from school yeah. today yeah. they would be yeah. yeah but this was a different time back then so, i don't think i don't yeah. think the adults knew how to handle i mean back, back like then this. the pe teacher could slug you in the face and dude <laughs> yeah. that bitch deserved it okay so listen man <laughs> let's um, get into the characters because there isn't one decent person no everybody in this, in this movie is movie. terrible yeah like mm -hmm. even to a certain extent carrie's a bit fucked up too but even I, tommy to a certain extent yeah i i there's no good I mean, characters in this movie um, but you were talking about the characters. So do you, I don't even know half of their names. I know Carrie. That's about it. Everybody else was uh, just like, bitch one, bitch two. Yeah. Do, like yeah. douchebag cheerleader um, and crazy stupid mom. principal. So yeah. Sue, John Travolta. Sue is the girl who feels bad after and gets her boyfriend to ask Carrie to the prom. Okay. Because according to her, I feel like I owe it to Carrie to give her a high school experience that she might enjoy. And she was being legit. She was being legit. I thought she was in on I it. I thought she was no, in on it. No, 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 no. She, in, in the book, it gets more in depth than this. She actually has like some weird kind of psychic connection with Carrie hmm. where they kind of share each other's feelings. Hmm. And she f genuinely feels what Carrie was feeling and she feels terrible and she trusts her boyfriend and she loves her boyfriend. And she's like, I want you to make her feel like how you make me feel. And so she genuinely wants Carrie to have um, just a moment that's nice. Mm. And she wants to do something nice for her. And it was funny because when we were watching this movie, like during the, the prom where Tommy is ba basically kind of like getting sweet on Carrie, uh, I turned to Jude. I was like, "Like, is, is his girlfriend cool with him? Like, yeah, he making was like, out with How his far was she cool with it? <laughs> yeah, he's going. like making bedroom eyes and shit. Yeah. I'm like, What's this well, guy he doing? flat out like kisses her on the dance floor, mm -hmm. and he kisses her on the stage too. Yeah, That's yeah. And, See, and I thought they were in on. It. I, I, think, they... I think he's just caught up in the moment. And, no, and, uh, and it's funny because Tommy Ross, who plays, or I should say, William Cat, who plays Tommy Ross, what? he's really? he's from House. Uh, no, he's from Gr the Great Amer American Hero. That's who I thought he yeah. was. Greatest American, the dude in the red pajamas, yeah, right? Yeah, the dude in the red pajamas. Wow. He's, he's, he's got the, the most amazing mane of blonde curly <laughs> hair I've hair ever seen on a so man. so good. Yeah. What were you saying? House? Yeah, that horror movie House with the oh, John Oh, the horror Lynn. movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought you were talking about the TV show. Oh, no, not that one. Okay. No, so, no, but but I, I was looking at him the entire time. I was like, where do I know this guy from? And I checked his IMDb and I was like, like, greatest American hero. Yeah, it's like yeah. what I thought too, but like, oh, I can't be. Can't be the right same dude because this thing's way too cool I can't for that. Watch this part. So we're, we have the screen on right now. Oh, we're watching yeah, yeah. Carrie. When let's, talk, let's talk about her mom. When when she goes home after her traumatic experience, <clears throat> the and it's funny that you mentioned like I don't think people back then knew how to deal with this. That's shown in this movie. Absolutely. Like the, the principal is like, "What happened?" And the gym teacher, for give her a lot of credit, she actually did genuinely want to help Carrie yeah. and protect her from the other girls. And uh, she's like, this is what happened. And this is, and she has like a little bit of stains on her pants. And the dude is just sitting there like, oh God. Stains of period blood. Period blood. He's like, oh, this is so gross. I like, like, can't even look at you right now. I'm like, dude, fucking grow up, bro. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? And, but even the gym teacher says like, I wanted to slap her too. To get her out of her frenzy. Yeah. yeah to yeah. yeah, get her. I think she did, didn't she? Well, well the yeah. gym teacher just has no problem slapping, slapping a bitch. <laughs> she will slap yeah. a bitch if she needs to. I respected <laughs> her for that. Um, but then she goes home, she gets sent home early and, and this is the first introduction we get to, well, not the first, but well, yeah. her mom's out there like knocking on doors, preaching the word. Yeah. It's her, it's our first, uh, introduction to like the relationship that she has with Carrie. Right. Larry. Yeah. And it, her mom's a psycho. It freaking psycho really me, just dude. Freaking, yeah. Mrs. White. Freaking so, flashbacks yeah, yeah, and so all that shit. I, Okay, so I mean, everybody, anybody who knows me on this show knows that I'm not a real, I'm not a religious person. Grew up very religious. Um, I can kind of relate to this. Yes. But this, her mom's character is such a super far extreme it's version. A hype, yeah, yeah, for sure. You, you know, it's like, it's like I, I don't want to get into it because I just, I just don't. But you know, I, I grew up in a Pentecostal church. You know, it was more, my church was more footloose. You, you know what I'm saying? From the movie, it's yeah. Like, it's like, 
Kevin kids, Bacon. kids don't need to dance and you know six inches apart and all this kind of stuff and yada yada yada. We were all very rebellious and I and I had issues with my parents and blah blah blah. Uh, but but this thing, this is next level. This is like this Salem is next, witch trials. Yeah, this, <laughs> this character that her mom played was like Hype, mentally yeah. deranged, crazy religious person. Yeah, well, and you, so. you know what's funny is that Piper Laurie, who plays um, Margaret White, the uh, Carrie's, Carrie's mother. mother. Um, so when she read the, the script, um, she actually thought that this was a comedy because she was like, "No one is going to yeah. act like this." And so like, the entire time they were, they were filming, she was like, "This is a black comedy. I'm going to go way over the top with this," because. Mm -hmm. She just thought she she wasn't in a horror movie, mm -hmm. but Brian De Palma, who who's the director of this film, like like he, he you know he was directing her and and he was like I don't care if she thinks it's a comedy because she's giving me gold. He was like yeah, yeah do it, it's, Lord. <laughs> dude. The scene where Carrie is like on her knees and the camera angle is looking straight I'm sorry, up at Mama. her. I'm sorry, mom. You sinful child, read the Bible. And I was like. <laughs> And yeah. her mother's whole yeah, yeah, perspective is like, that like, she didn't need to tell her about periods because if she didn't sin, she, she would never get it one. So fucking bananas, dude. Yeah. Like I just it that shit stresses me out. You ever get a freaking hyper crazy horror religious movie? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna not breathe for two hours. <laughs> like it's just I was holding my breath through this That's entire like, scene. And, I, and where whereas, you know, I grew up I, I feel like I grew up in kind of like a weird kind of oppressive religious environment. And you, you, you know, and again, it's just it is what it is. I'm I'm I, I like to think I'm mostly past it in my and, old age, but, but stuff like this makes me cringe. It, yeah. it like, it freaks me the fuck out. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh God, you know, it's just like, like cause and I can kind of sort of relate to Carrie absolutely. a little bit. Absolutely. Cause like, you know, I'm not saying like, this happened to me. No, I'm but, not either. But if circumstances were different, but here's the thing. I know. I know people who go through this who, shit. Yeah. Who were in, whose parents were fucking whack jobs. Yes. Who went through, this something very similar to this yeah. similar kind of stuff i know people get like and you, you went this, out to this day they're fucked like you went out on a date with yeah, a boy yeah. you look get locked in your room for a fucking yeah 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 eight yeah. hours or some shit like yeah. that like yeah, and, yeah. It's just, and it's interesting because there's like heavy religious symbolism all throughout mm -hmm. this movie and and part of that's from stephen king's writing but another part of that is <clears throat> just Brian De Palma putting in like thematically like stuff like that. For instance, when Carrie's having dinner with her mother uh, before they, before she goes to the prom, there's like this huge tapestry of the last supper mm -hmm. like behind them. And it's like super oh. creepy and it's like dark. Uh, Cause I guess they don't believe in electricity or something like that. <laughs> um, but, 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 that's literally the last supper that Carrie has with her uh, mother. Mm -hmm. And then there's like this closet that Carrie gets locked in. The prayer um, closet. Like, yeah, <laughs> to, to kind of reflect on her sins. And in there, we mm -hmm. have what Jude called a creepy Jesus statue. Yeah, yeah. It's creep creepiest the creepiest Jesus statue ever. But, but that's actually not Jesus. That's St. Sebastian, who's uh, the patron saint of the holy death or like, you know, uh, the righteous death. Oh, wow. And uh, basically that means that like, you know, if you die for what you believe in, um, St. Sebastian is your patron saint. And um, in at the end of the movie, when Carrie's mother tries to stab her dirty pillows. She's um, in the same pose. <laughs> she stabs her, her back. Yeah, yeah. So, so she stabs her back and she's trying to kill Carrie. And Carrie uses her telekinetic abilities to throw every kitchen utensil she can, and it ends up kind of crucifying her, reflect, <laughs> reflecting the statue of Saint Sebastian. Sure, yeah, yeah in, in, she's in the same pose the, the as the statue. Yeah. 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 And she even has daggers and, in the same spots and, in her chest. Yeah. And they played it where, like, basically, um, Margaret White um, almost has like an orgasm every time she's stabbed. Like, like, <laughs> and, and and it's because basically, like, she's she's dying for what she believes in and that's like the best way for her to die kill in her the mind witch. yeah kill exactly the witch. and and so like that image of her as saint sebastian was meant to reflect that like thematically like there's a lot of deep stuff in this movie yeah mm -hmm. for sure um th it's something interesting cuz we were talking about like witches and stuff like that and her mom like i said has like a very salem witch trial vibe oh, to her yes. like she is out on the hunt for a witch and she's going to kill one even if it's her own daughter all she's ever wanted is a witch of a daughter so that she could crucify right her. yeah it's crazy <laughs> and, and, and it, the creepiest thing was when jude was like reciting the lines where she was oh, talking you can where, where she was talking where, where she was talking about like how like carrie was Told conceived it's like, and Lord help me, I liked it. The stink of the filthy roadhouse whiskey on his breath. And I liked it. I liked it. I liked it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I saw her boobies and I liked them too. Um, he came home with the whiskey on his breath. And I liked it. 
<laughs> Jesus Christ. She she I'm literally sorry. said it word for word as I we were watching. I know this it. movie. That's good. That's good. good for you. Good for you. I just I, it was a weird coincidence because this week I had happened to be like I was looking at some history stuff and I heard something on a podcast about uh, uh, the Salem witch trials about why they actually happened. And apparently there's been some research done and they looked up like a core sample of the soil of Massachusetts at that time. And it was just riddled with this certain type of mold mm -hmm. that grows on grain because they had yeah. an especially wet spring. I heard that too. Yeah. And this mold had grown on their grain uh, during that time period. And it made everybody this, hallucinate. And it made everybody hallucinate. Wow. And they were like, the girls who started the witch trial, there was these two girls, I can't remember their names, but they, they started having convulsions and they claimed that they were bewitched by a witch outside of town. And it was because they were eating this bread that had this mold on it and they were freaking out having hallucinations. And then because the town all kind of shared like the same stock for their grain, everybody was tripping balls yeah. for those like, I don't know how it was it 1792 to 1796 or something like that or whatever. Um, they were just like consuming this laced bread yeah. and it was causing everybody to have wow. like mass hallucinations. Honest to God, when we were, when we were watching, um, Firestarter at the beginning, when they're doing the lot six experiment mm -hmm. and everybody starts tripping, I turned to Kadish and I was like, this is my worst nightmare. You, I cannot handle being high. <laughs> slip, slip me a hallucinogenic and I, I legit will probably jump out a window and kill myself. I, I couldn't handle it. So yeah. One of the interesting things about this movie and, and the story that's based on is Stephen King's basically come out and said that this was like his allegory for feminism at the time. Yeah. And um, so like it's the movie starts All off, right. <laughs> the, the movie starts off with Carrie getting her period, which is, you know, the symbol of becoming a woman. Right. And then at the end of the movie, when like she gets, the, you know, the pig's blood on her and stuff like that, um, like that's like the embodiment of her, like becoming the, the symbol of what it is to be a woman, like having a period. And um, basically the entire movie builds up to, to a point where like we see how like women are, um, are abused and mistreated and all this other stuff. And Carrie, when she becomes the embodiment of what it means to be a woman, she tears down and destroys all the institutions and people who um, prevent women from meeting their full potential. And this is Stephen King coming yeah. out and saying this yeah, He stuff. is on cocaine. Uh, <laughs> also, um, <laughs> men writing what it means to be a woman Super weird. Fuck off. <laughs> but but, but th this was a lot of the, the symbolism that uh, that Brian De Palma put in, into this movie, and it was all from Stephen King mm. telling him this. Because we, we got to remember, Carrie, this was the first book that was ever published by Stephen King. Really? And in fact, he notice. in fact he had thrown it away because he thought it was stupid. And his wife found it, and <clears> she was like, you know what? I, I really want to <throat> know how this ends. Can you write an ending for it? And so he wrote the ending, and in the book, he, she, uh, Carrie actually um, destroys, like, the entire town. Yeah. And she has like she's sending out like so much psychic energy that everyone in town, even though that even if they don't know her, knows that she's causing this. And um, so like it was, uh, they didn't have the budget to do that in the movie, but um, you know she kind of destroys the entire town. And um, uh, Stephen King actually liked the ending of the movie better than the one he wrote for the book, but um, he submitted it once he finished it, and it got picked up and published. And they actually sold the movie rights to it right away for like. 2,500 bucks. Jesus. Which, yeah, which was like nothing. And But because this movie was such a huge hit, it really put Stephen King on the map. And, and that's what caused him to blow up and become like the big author that he yeah. was, was because of this movie. Yeah, Carrie's way more powerful in the book than she is in the movie. Yeah. They, they brought it down a little bit, um, which I think probably made it a little bit more believable. Honestly, I, I expected them to go big. And I, I was a little underwhelmed by the end of this movie. So like, I, like once the opening first act is done and they reveal that they're going to send her to the prom with this dude. Like, I almost was like, I know exactly what's going to happen. They're going to fuck with this poor girl. Uh -huh. They're going to go, she's going to go on stage as queen and they're going to do something to her. I didn't know what it was going to be, but I'm like, they're going to do something. They're going to embarrass her. And she's going to go on like a rampage. You didn't right? know about the pig's blood. Uh, -uh. Huh. I had no idea. It's like so, one of the most iconic scenes ever. Filmed. Yeah. yeah. I've never here's, famous. Here, yeah. Here's my thing. Um, once you get past all the weird nakedness and religious cringiness, right? Mm. You get to the prom. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, you get all these girls, they're being complete slags. Right. They're They're going to, you know, they're going to do their, I'm going to get even with her, you know, I'm going to pigs blood stuff. Um, well, that scene at the prom is one of the most iconic images in, in horror movies ever of all time. Never seen it. You've never, never seen, seen it. it. It's a mess. That the only blows thing my mind. It's just her carry or what? What's the name of the actress? Um, uh, Sissy, Sissy Spacek. Spacek. Sissy Space, Spacek covered in blood is 
it's it's horror movie to its core. My whole it, I, life, I mean, I have only I, ever wanted to look good in a dress like that. Yeah, <laughs> so she was going to come out I, of the I, wedding of pig's blood. Right. <laughs> but what I, what I want to say is 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 I feel like I've seen this movie sometime in the past, but I don't remember when. But I feel like. I kind of had like an exorcist moment with this movie. It's like, remember when I like, I just watched exorcist to get it out of my brain because mm -hmm. it was stupid and I was kind of scared of the movie and, but it wasn't scary. Mm -hmm. Well, I kind of approached this movie in the same way, but I had to watch it cause we're talking about it today. But, and cause I don't remember when I watched it, but what, what my, my takeaway is, is um, it's like this most, it's one of the most notorious horror movie scenes ever. But it's not really my scary. God, it's not scary. It's not yeah. scary. Yeah. I was it's so. It's more like it puts you I in the perspective so, of, oh my God, they're torturing this girl. Yeah. I was so disappointed in the prom scene at the end. Yeah. I was like, I, I what the fuck? It's just, okay, there's a hose. Squirt people. I, I, I that was what it was. I wouldn't necessarily, me personally, wouldn't classify this as a horror movie. Oh, I would. In 1976. Sure. Yeah. yeah. That was a long time ago. Um, this, to me, this is just a tragedy. Like yeah. this is, it is, this that is a as tragic well. movie. Like yeah. this poor girl can't escape horror at, at school. Yeah. She can't escape horror She's, when she goes I home. Might be even worse her. when she goes home. Yeah. Oh, she, it's definitely, her life is definitely worse. It's horrible. Like this is Absolutely. a horrible life for this her, poor her girl. Own, her only saving grace is her relationship with the gym teacher. And then when she goes home after the freaking traumatic prom thing, mm -hmm. her mom tries to kill her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then she dies because her house explodes or something like that, or, no, or it sinks no, into a sinkhole of Satan, hell. Satan comes to it's just <laughs> take her home. No, it's like, she can't catch a break. I felt so bad for this whole movie. I never yeah. once was scared. I was just I, like, this poor girl. I yeah. thought the movie was... And that's the real horror aspect the, the, of the, the ending, the very ending, when the house goes to hell. Yeah, yeah. That is the goofiest, stupidest thing <laughs> I've ever that seen. That was totally made up for the movie. It was, that was dumb. Yeah, it was It was dumb. absolutely dumb. It, kinda, it was just like, oh, what the... F this just went and from like, like a horror movie to a my perception clown of show. like after the prom pig's blood thing happens. Yeah. What I expected to happen after that was oh now she's going to tap into her telekinesis yeah. and she's gonna destroy I, I, everybody. I kind of feel like I want to see the remake just to see how extra they went. After <laughs> I've seen that. the remake. It's pretty close to this. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, that's disappointing. It's oh, a bummer. Because man, I would they need they need to have somebody like a. Uh, Rob Zombie get his pick, yeah like his, after the pig just I don't trust dude Rob after Zombie. full right in hard R just, just fuck everybody hardcore up. <laughs> after she gets tortured turn, at, turn at the prom turn inside out I want to see just that shit murders everybody like that's take what whole, I expected to see the, do the book ending take the whole goddamn city down just fuck have everybody her, like up. go full Scarlet Witch just yeah, floating through dude. the town Hell like yeah. fucking bra like blowing people that's, up that's what I wanted that's to see. what I expected in, yeah, in the book she can kill people with her mind she she stops her mother's heart I was like that's I'm it kill you with mind bullets yeah. blow their heads up kinda anic anic <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Blow, blow their mind their but heads like, up like in a, the book the as she's rampaging through town she's sending out waves of oh, psychic man. energy that she I don't even think she can control I want to see that every single person who is in the town feels exactly what she's feeling mm, the sweet. horror inside of her she puts out i feel like they could do like a scarlet yeah. witch thing and, with that. and that's actually one of the reasons why um um the girl who hates her is played by nancy allen in this mm -hmm. I, I think yeah, they just call her chris in the movie yeah it's um, chris but, chris hard but something. Cr chris and her boyfriend try to run um carrie down to to prevent her from destroying the rest of the town mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons why like you know she like flips the car over and blows it up mm -hmm. in this in the movie it's just like oh they're just being assholes still yeah. trying yeah. to like, yeah. like run yeah. her down. Chris Harginson. I'm like, that was a that was a strong reaction to like not being able to get the revenge that you wanted. Like, I'm gonna run a bitch over. Like, <laughs> That's okay. typical Stephen King villain though. <laughs> yeah, they're all douchebags. Yeah, there, so, there, there's a scene in here where she where Chris is trying to convince John Travolta, her boyfriend, to <laughs> to help her with her revenge by giving him a blowjob, but it's somehow- It's like a hands-free blowjob <laughs> yeah. too. And, Both of her hands are on his chest. And and also like when I first watched this film in college, I was watching it with a girl that I was kind of like, you know, trying to get with. <laughs> and uh, and when we came to the scene, the girl was, was staring there, watching it, and she was like, how is she still talking? <laughs> yes, I thought the same thing. <laughs> it's like, how is she, she's like, how is she she's forming like, words there? She's like, oh honey, this is so great. And I'm like, don't you have his dick in his mouth? <laughs> like, what's going on right now? Billy, I hate Carrie White. Who? Probably like just nosing it. Yeah, <laughs> she's just rubbing it. Oh, Billy. Oh, Billy. <laughs> John Travolta's over here slobbering a beer. 
<laughs> oh, what a goofball. I, I, I think that they had to do that to imply that she wasn't really giving him a Because it was job. 1976 and um, they were scared. Yeah, 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 to get past like the censors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, so goofy. But it, yeah, yeah, it's a very goofy. Um, okay, so there's two things I want to mention. One, uh, the gym teacher mm -hmm. slapping a bitch. Mm -hmm. Loved it. Oh, yeah. I cheered. Yeah. I was like, that bitch deserved it. Get her. Get her. <laughs> I was rooting for the gym teacher. Yeah, and we, then, we never fly today. No. but I thought, people, are, people are soft today, dude. <laughs> but even in the movie, Chris says, you're going to get canned for this. Yeah, Listen, for sure. In, in 1982, 1983, when I was in junior high school, I got my ass beat by my teachers. We had fucking paddles. Yeah. And they did not, they weren't lightly taps. They were this. Do you remember, remember that scene from like, uh, uh, Dead Poet Society? Where they like, they all got in trouble and they yeah. got sent to the principal's office and he just pulls out a fucking flat, like a, a cricket bat. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's like, all right, motherfuckers, get line up. It's like, Pull your pants down. It fucking times were weird, like dude. These days, people are like, hey, man, I'm going to sue. Well, teachers can't do shit to I anybody. Know, I, they get so I, much. I, I, I don't know. Be, I couldn't be a teacher. I now. couldn't either. If I can't beat some kid's ass, I can't be a teacher. <laughs> Forget it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not sending it to your school. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> no, but, see, people are fucking soft these days. Because like my, um, I took my kid to, this has something to do with teaching and stuff like that. But I went, I took my kid to the archery class and there was this other archery. He's very professional. He's in his like mm -hmm. sponsored jersey and shit like that. And my kid wasn't following the rules of the range correctly. And the dude like, snapped back at him like hey don't do that that's not allowed you're supposed to do x y and like do it this way instead and my son like looked at me and i was like the fuck do you want me to do about it bro like <laughs> follow the rules follow the rules he's an adult <laughs> he told you what to do do it like and, and he and the dude looked at me like oh shit like are you his dad i'm like don't fucking worry about it dude you're good like, <laughs> it's like it, he's learning he's learning life lessons yeah right if now. you're putting him in check put him in check it's fine <laughs> like it's not a big deal but if you put hands on him that'd be a different story but it's just, it was a wild time. And then the other bitch slap is uh, John Travolta when his girlfriend calls him a stupid <gasps> shit. And he's oh, just yeah, like, good. whack. They <laughs> whack the shit out of each other. And Kadish was like, boy, she could take a hit, huh? <laughs> she didn't but, give a shit. Well, the, <laughs> the funny part about that scene. So, so like um, when the gym teacher hit her, so like the actress was actually hitting Nancy Allen in the <gasps> face. Whoa, no um, way. Be because um, um, Brian De Palma was like, I need a better reaction from her. She's not giving me enough. Actually hit her. And so John Travolta was the only one who <laughs> fake hit Nancy Allen <laughs> in the movie. Like everyone else was actually making contact. God damn. I told you never to call me that. Don't call me that. <laughs> Stupid shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna take a quick break and then we'll be right back. We'll polish up our discussion on Carrie. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, if you guys want to support what we do here and you like our podcast, head over to saltingclub.com and become a club member. Uh, there's a lot of perks to this. It's only $5 a month. You guys get four exclusive podcasts every single month talking about classic sci-fi. We've talked about Doctor Who, Stargate Atlantis, uh, the original series of Star Trek. We're doing Farscape right now. We have a ton of fun and we get real raunchy because it's completely unedited. <laughs> well, it's just like we go full bore under the club members area stuff. So if you want to get access to that, head over to the club members uh, Patreon at saltinearclub.com and sign up. All right. You want that good, good sleaze commercial free? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, we yeah got, ad we free. Got, Everything we got ad really free. raunchy today, didn't we? We got so raunchy. I'm so I glad mean, it's behind a paywall. Farscape is a very. Uh, there were sex chairs. It was a thing. All kinds of crazy yeah. stuff. We got wild. All right. All right. So, Carrie. So, yeah. I have so many thoughts about this movie. Like, I genuinely went into this thinking it was going to be straight horror, like Evil Dead. This was the first watch for you, yes? Yeah. Okay. And it's, that's not what I got. I'm not saying it's bad. I just was expecting com something completely different. But so um, I want to talk about Brian De Palma for a minute here. Um, so he's the guy who directed this movie. He's one of those filmmakers who's just on the cusp of being like a legendary filmmaker because he's made some classic movies. But at the same time, he's also made some like truly like horrible movies. And so like it's kind of hard to say that he's like a master craftsman. But at the same time, you see like bits and pieces of his genius at work in, in this movie. And one of the things that's easy to forget about watching like movies from like the 70s and 80s is like they didn't have like CGI mm -hmm. and they didn't have nonlinear computer editing or and stuff standards. like that or safety <laughs> standards. Um, but in this movie, so like at the end of the movie when Carrie is having like her freak out, Brian De Palma uses a technique that he's kind of famous for, which is split screen mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. And at the time, like that was all stuff that you had to do in the editing room with actual film. Like you had to plan it out before you did it. And then you had to like actually like 
physically make the split screen work. And s split screen is when you have two different characters at different depths, both in focus, right? So you have no, 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 no. That, that's split focus. Okay. And which so which is an, another thing that Brian De Palma is well known for, where basically something in the background is in focus as well as something in the foreground. You mm -hmm. can kind of see like the hazy uh, area. There's, yeah, there's always a cut or something. Yeah, where, yeah. where the focus is split. But a split screen is, is like when you have like... The perspective two, of two different characters. Yeah, two, well, two different images side by side that are on the screen concurrently with one okay. another. Yep. And and so like it, it's almost like putting as much information on screen as possible. So in Carrie, you know, there was a close-up of Sissy Spacek and, and Blood. And then like there's the, the shots of like the students reacting to what's going on. So like you can see like Carrie doing the stuff to the students and then reacting at the same time. And he actually had um, a, a much more elaborate split screen planned for the ending, but he thought it was like too distracting. And so he actually um, pulled back on it a little bit. <clears throat> But uh, Brian De Palma was also heavily influenced by Hitchcock. Like Hitchcock was like his yeah. his ideal like filmmaker, and it was, it was the guy that he pulled the most inspiration from. And in this film, um, every time Carrie uses her powers, they use the stinger from Psycho, the re 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 <laughs> thing. And uh, the high school is called Bates High School, which is oh, uh, really? Norman Bates oh, really? uh, from um, from hmm. Psycho. Uh, so like it, it's actually very interesting and Brian De Palma at the time that this movie was made he was part of like the counterculture crew which was a, a group of young Hollywood filmmakers who had kind of um, been mentored by uh, Francis Ford Coppola and that consisted of George Lucas, Steven Spielberg, uh, George, uh, John Milhouse and, and Brian De Palma and these were all guys who actually like were the first ones to see a screening of Star Wars and give George Lucas like feedback on on the movie and stuff like that. But uh, at the time, so like um, Steven Spielberg hadn't really um, made a big movie at, at this point in his career. And so when Brian De Palma was making this, this was like his first big hit. But when he was on set, he'd go to like his buddies, you know, like this counterculture crew and he'd be like, guys, you wouldn't believe the hot girls I have on my movie set. Like you need, you need to come down and, and hang out. And so like Steven Spielberg came out on set almost every day um, to, to, to hang out with these chicks. And uh, Amy Irving, who plays Sue in this movie, eventually became Steven Spielberg's first wife. And he wow. met her on this, uh, on this, on the oh, set of this movie, wow. thanks to Brian De Palma, encouraging him to come and sleaze on his actresses. Um, Brian De Palma, uh, met Nancy Allen on this movie, and Nancy Allen, who was RoboCop's um, uh, partner, partner uh, eventually married uh, Brian De Palma. So, like, they became husband and wife uh, down the line, and it was all. Wait, she was the chick at the end, right? That, she's that the lived? evil one with she's John the... Travolta. Yeah, she's John Travolta's girlfriend. She's Murphy. Yeah, she's what? Murphy. The blonde hot chick is Murphy. Yeah. Yes. What? You saw Murphy's <laughs> boobs. And Bush. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did we just blow was your it, mind? Wasn't what Weird. you thought it would be? <laughs> Weird. How star for Robocop tits. <laughs> Six degrees of separation. Wow. Of you got to give it an yeah. extra Man, I'm like, You guys blew my mind. Yeah, but, but mind. Brian De Palma was like, like, he really was on display in terms of like his talent with this movie. And this is the movie that launched him into the stratosphere because it was such a huge hit. And, um, you know, Stephen King loved him because like, you know, blew up Stephen King's career and, and uh, fixed all the problems with the book. <laughs> and um, it, it was just like, it, it, was, it was a very kind of powerful first entry from a director who would go on to make like some very, like really good movies. Nice. Are you guys ready for final thoughts? I am. Okay. Vader, final thoughts, give it a rating. Hmm. You, you do Are half you star. Spinning? So you do half star for boobs, but you deduct points for 70s Bush. <laughs> So does is, it is that it can, does it cancel they each cancel other out? Each other out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, what? I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> the rules are made up and don't matter. Right. So. That is true. <laughs> um, man, I'm I'm really conflicted with this movie because it made me feel uncomfortable in a hundred different ways. But yet at the same time, I appreciate its its his, his historical significance and 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 place in in movie moviedom. You know, um, sure. Um, I mean, because it's an important movie. This is yeah. a, this is a big movie in the cultural zeitgeist of film. It really is. Um, I don't know. I don't know where exactly to put it. Um, I'm, I'm gonna say three and a half stars, maybe four. Um, no, I'm gonna go three and a half because this is just it's just not the kind of a movie that. 
makes me I, I don't know I don't know if I'll ever watch it again. I don't know. Um but it needs to be pointed out that this is an important movie in in cinema and it's just it is what it is. So personal on my own personal scale I'm going to say three and a half scale. Okay. Three and a half stars. So All right. Do you have a five yeah. star movie for you? Yeah. Um yeah. this is one of my favorite all-time movies. This is probably one of uh top three movies. I, right. I've watched this a million times. I probably know every line of dialogue. I've read the book that it was based on. Um, this is a movie that like, so you guys know that like my ratings are always based on mm -hmm. like how it makes me feel. Right. Um, this is a movie that no matter how many times I watch it, I still feel like the anxiety of mm -hmm. it. And every single time it gets to the point where there's a, a point in the movie where Sue, the girl who got her boyfriend to ask Carrie out, she comes to the prom because she wants to see like her plan come to fruition. And she wants to see Carrie having a good time. And she figures out what Chris and John Travolta are up to. Right. And there's that scene where the, the gym, gym teacher, teacher and her. grabs her and isn't listening to her saying like, look, look, they're right there. Yeah. And if the gym teacher would just fucking listen to her, yeah. she could have stopped this whole thing and everybody would survive. She got fucking every single time I watch this movie. Yeah. I, I, I still ha have that feeling of just turn around, just listen to her, just stop. Every single time I watch this movie, it makes me feel that over and over again. This is a five star movie. Okay, cool. I respect that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Kiddish? Yeah, and, and part of that scene, which is part of Brian De Palma's brilliance, is, is that he spends a lot of time kind of like foreshadowing this stuff. And that, that's typical Hitchcock, where like you show the, the clock ticking down on the bomb and the people, you know, talking around it and not noticing the bomb. And people are like, oh, my God, like, just, you know, get away from the bomb. Um, and in, in that scene in the build up to the pig's blood falling down, like there's like a whole there's like a good two minute build up. To that where like amy irving's character is figuring out what's going on she's trying to stop it and um and we're seeing carrie having like like her moment in the spotlight and we see charlie getting ready to like ruin it and it's it creates a, a great deal of tension um there, there's a lot of great stuff in this movie and i can see why it's like such a such a classic but at the same time like I, like it is an uncomfortable film to watch on many different levels and also i i feel like um uh, up until you get to the um the prom scene it's very slow mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of a boring movie actually and and you just feel bad watching carrie go through like all like the hardships that she has to go through so to me i would i'd give this like a, a solid two dirty pillows out of five two you're crazy wow that's pretty low i i, I mean like i, I get it. it's not to, to me three stars is an entertaining film mm -hmm. i wasn't really entertained by this i can appreciate it but i, I just felt like it was kind of like a, a slow movie that wasn't very scary and was very uncomfortable yeah. but it's not a bad movie so right. be, hold on be before you give your score <laughs> yeah and before i get lambasted in the comment section of okay. this video um i need to uh correct myself i was corrected in our discord chat okay um it's not murphy these aren't murphy's boobs <laughs> this is Lewis's boobs. Murphy is actually RoboCop. Right. Okay. Right. We got oh, that. Yeah. We got that mixed up bad. Sorry. 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 That's, yeah. that's the bourbon talking. You are correct. So Lewis, so Officer Lewis is is. What did we say? We said Murphy. Murphy from Starship Trooper. From, 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 <laughs> from RoboCop. <laughs> from RoboCop. Yeah, we're fucked up. But anyway, I don't so remember. yes, I apologize for getting my for we're getting Murphy and Lewis mixed up. I don't remember half the shit I say on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. So so anyway, yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, fixed. We've said repeatedly that yeah, none yeah. of this shit matters. Just, we're gonna get a comment. Yeah. You know, okay. we're gonna get a comment. That's all right. Yeah. These people yeah. aren't even it's fans just of Nancy movies. Nancy Allen boobs. So yeah. So <laughs> now what? I want, what is your score of Carrie? Yes, Mr. Anne, Alex? Anne Lewis is her name yes, in yes. RoboCop. Okay. So first watch, I wasn't bored. Um, I was on. I was along for the ride. I felt so bad for Carrie. Um, I got a lot of emotional, like just stress out of this movie from the very beginning to the crazy religious mom to the the prom thing happening, which I kind of saw coming. So I wasn't shocked by that, but I was just like, oh my god, I can't mm -hmm. believe this poor girl just can't catch a break. Um, after the prom thing happens, I fully expected this movie to go full like which horror sci-fi like floating through yeah. the air, like blowing people's heads off. That like, was I, awesome. I was like, this is going to be fucking great. I can't wait for Carrie to get her revenge. 76. Dude. And then it just kind of flopped at the end. And I was like, Oh man. Like, so I, I, I left this movie feeling a little disappointed. I wasn't 
thrilled with the ending. So you had an emo uh, emotional roller coaster. I did. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, this is so stressful. Her mom's crazy. And then it kind of slumped in the second act. And I was like, okay, I'm preparing for what's going to happen. I can kind of see the roadmap. And then at the end, I was like, oh, this is going to be crazy. And then it just kind of freaking fizzled out at the end. Did you like, like the uh, tuxedo <gasps> montage? Oh God. Dude, dude, Those the, tuxedos. The, the, the frills. The frills. Oh, really? oh, the frills. Crap, dude. He's like, I don't like ruffles. <laughs> well, you don't have to get ruffles. I just don't want ruffles. <laughs> the um, 70s were, it was such an ugly era yeah and the huge clothes. bow ties oh god it was so 70s ugly. were bad for fashion everything haircuts the fashion yeah. the, the hair everything. the yeah. hair gave me everything Dude, it had to every to 70s tommy's, hairdo tommy's hair yeah and like when the girls are doing like the the pe stuff it's like you have every single 70s style of woman's hair on display. Mm -hmm. yeah, and um, I, I wanna oh, I, I wanna give a, a quick thing about PJ Souls, the girl who wears the red hat yeah. all mm -hmm. the time in, in, in this movie. Her signature red hat. Yeah, um, so like her role in this, so she originally started off, she was just like a background player. And De Palma liked her so much that he kept her in the movie. And this actually led her to getting cast in John Carpenter's Halloween as the yeah. babysitter who gets nice. killed. Mm -hmm. So shout out to her. She, she so, gives the, um, the Aggressive boob shot. Alex. Yeah, she, she she actually got her, her eardrum blown out by that um, fire hose at the end. It took her six months to heal from that. <gasps> wow. Yeah. Hey, Alex, mm -hmm. what's your grade? Three. Three stars. Yeah. Okay. Solid three. <clears throat> Solid three. Yep. Important Man. movie. Important movie in history. I'll <laughs> it, give it that. It is. It absolutely is. And that's, and I, Not I think, for me. I think I gave it a half star. Never going to watch it again. I'll yeah. watch it again next. <laughs> next I'll, I'll, I'll watch it again this October. <laughs> like a month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, that's it for Carrie, 1976. Um, comment below. What do you think about this movie? Let us know. Is it uh, what star rating do you, do you give it? Comment. We love comments. We How many all. fire hoses do you give it? Three fire hoses. <laughs> Three possessed fire hoses. Three and a of, half. Out of five. All right, that's it for today's podcast, guys. Thank you so much. Hope you guys enjoyed Stephen King week. Um, we've had a ton of fun talking about these Stephen King movies. What's uh, what's on our Tremors? Tr oh, Tremors oh, week. We're doing week. Tremors I'm one, two, excited. and three. <laughs> Here's the thing. Should we announce this right now? I guess we might as well. Yeah. David Hewlett's going to be with us. Oh, yeah, yeah. So David Hewlett, McKay from Stargate Atlantis, is going to be on talking about Tremors with us. You can us. have my seat. So... <laughs> Get him a plane ticket. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to be joining us uh, via the internet to uh, talk about Tremors. So if you're a fan of those movies and if you're a fan of uh, Stargate Atlantis and Dr. McKay, come on over, hang out with us. We're talking uh, Star. We're talking Tremors with David Hewlett. It's going to be a lot of fun. That'll be fun. Uh, v, where can they find you on the socials? You, you can find me at Matt Vader 74 on all the socials that matter. So that's where I'm going to leave it. I dig it. All right. All right. Jude, I almost called you Carrie. That was weird. Jude. <laughs> <laughs> They're all gonna laugh at me. You can find me at I am Jude Juju on Instagram and on TikTok. All right, cool. Matthew Cage, where can people find you? Slapping bitches. Slapping bitches. Five o'clock. Bitch slapping. Five o'clock. Bitch slapping time. That's right. Slappy yeah. Joe. Slappy, <laughs> slappy Joe. Joe. Jude, don't call him a stupid <laughs> shit. Don't call him a stupid he shit. He has told me not to call him that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You'll get one right across the face. Uh, you can find me at Matthew Kadish, K A D I S H, on Twitter and Truth Social. And KadishBooks.com takes you to my Amazon page. All right, folks, real quick announcement. This podcast is now available in video format on Spotify. So if you're a fan of podcasts, you listen to them, you can also get us on video on Spotify. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Super excited to have that happen. They just opened it up for us pleb podcasters. You know, it's not just Joe Rogan anymore. We're all on there. So uh, head over to Spotify and uh, subscribe, sign up. You guys can get us in both audio and video format. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching the video. Really appreciate it. Stay salty, my friends. We'll see you next week.